Yo, what's up guys hope you guys are doing good. So today we are going to see what if Naruto got harem with Fem Itachi part 1. Hope you will enjoy this video so before we start please like the video and subspecie arrive to our channel and hit bell notification it motivates me to upload more fanfics for my lovely audience. So let's get started. It was 13 years since the nine-tailed fox attacked the village hidden in the leaves and the fourth Hokage sealed the fox inside an innocent little boy in hopes of him being treated as a hero of the village, but his wishes were unanswered because after he died the villagers thought the boy was the fox itself and made his life miserable. This brave child's name is Naruto Uzumaki the container of the nine-tailed fox and the hero of Konoha but to most of the village the demon that plagues the village. Naruto is now 13 years old and attempting to pass the test to become a genin of the village and become Hokage so everyone would acknowledge him and not call him a demon. The teacher Aruka called out names and then he said, Naruto Uzumaki it's time for you to take the test, so Naruto stood up and went into the room to do the jutsus they want. Aruka looked at Naruto and wished him good luck because he really wanted Naruto to pass the exam, okay? First do a transformation into the third Hokage, Naruto nodded and transformed into the third Hokage and then after a minute he dispelled and waited for the next jutsu, okay, now do a substitution, Naruto nodded again and did what he was told. After all that Aruka sighed and said the last jutsu, okay, perform the clone jutsu, Naruto sweat dropped because this is the only jutsu he couldn't do no matter how much he tried. Aruka waited and Mizuki smirked knowing the demon, wouldn't pass, Naruto any time would be nice, said Mizuki and Naruto nodded. Naruto started all the necessary hand signs for the jutsu and then built up his chakra and said, clone jutsu, but to his disappointment they were dead and pathetic looking and Aruka had no choice but to say that he failed. Naruto couldn't believe it he tried to hard but all that went to waste so at the last moment Naruto rushed out of the classroom trying to hold back his tears from the all the insults the other kids were giving him as he was running. Naruto just kept on running away not stopping no matter what the villagers were saying about him and before he knew it he was at the forest of death like all those times he went there when he was a kid because of the villagers. Naruto entered the forest and just kept walking not knowing what he is going to do now. He just couldn't take it anymore and started crying. Hick I've tried so hard but I still can't do it and all the villagers make it harder. Maybe it would be better if I wasn't alive anymore. While Naruto's thoughts kept getting darker, he all of a sudden heard a sound of sticks breaking and went to check it out since he had nothing to really lose. Naruto snuck up to the person that was causing the noise and after finding said person he was left breathless. The person Naruto was looking at was one of the most beautiful women he has ever seen, she had lovely creamy white skin and she had magnificent black hair and to his surprise the outfit she was wearing which consisted of a red small jacket with a grey and black tank top as well as short grey jean shorts which showed of her creamy white legs, Naruto kept checking her out and every minute he did his cheeks kept getting redder. Naruto was about to say hello until he accidentally stepped on a twig and alerting that beautiful woman to his presence. Orochimaru was looking around for the hidden lab until she heard a twig snap and right away turned around to find a short kid with spiky blonde hair and blue ocean eyes wearing an ugly orange jumpsuit looking at her with curiously. Orochimaru right away panicked and transformed into her male form and disappeared right behind the kid. Naruto was looking at her and then noticed her do some hand signs and all of a sudden she transformed into a guy and vanished and next thing he knew there was a kunai at his throat. Naruto tried to gulp but was afraid what the guy, girl would do to him if he made any slight movements. Orochimaru was staring at the kid wondering what he was doing in the forest since it's the most dangerous place to be in and decided to ask the kid herself, hey kid, what are you doing inside the forest of death? Naruto was startled when she started to speak to him and decided to answer since it wouldn't be in his best interest to make her mad, this is where I go when the villagers try to kill me or when I feel very sad. Orochimaru's eyes widened after hearing that and decided to ask the kid when he was born and Naruto said, I was born 13 years ago, that confirmed Orochimaru's suspicions that he is a Jinchiraki and decided to ask the kid another question, boy, do you want to leave this accursed village? Naruto was surprised at that question, but wanted to answer it either way, yes, there's barely anyone that treats me good here and I'm sick of it, Orochimaru smiled and nodded her head. 
Naruto looked at the woman that's transformed as a guy and decided to ask her about the transformation. Uh, miss why did you transform into a guy when clearly you're very beautiful and don't need to hide your appearance. Orochimaru was taken back by the compliment, but had a smile on her face while turning around to face Naruto and she said, why Naruto, are you hitting on me? Naruto's face went red and he tried to deny it which made Orochimaru laugh and she gave Naruto a hug still in a guy form and told him why she transformed, Naruto do you know who I am? Naruto looked up and shook his head which caused Orochimaru to sigh and then she continued. My name is Orochimaru and I'm one the legendary snake Sanin who was condemned a traitor for doing illegal experimentations on human beings. Orochimaru let all that sink into Naruto's head and waited for him to push her away or scream and try to kill her, but instead he just hugged her male body tighter and said, I don't care what you did, you're the only person to ever really be kind to me and hug me like this. Orochimaru decided she could trust Naruto and dispelled her jutsu to make her a female again which got a surprise bloody nose from Naruto because he went form hugging her guy form to having C-cup breasts squishing against his face and she couldn't help but giggle at his reaction and continued on her explanation about her jutsu. Well Naruto, the reason I transform into a guy is because the legendary snake Sanin is known to be a guy and if they found out that I'm a female and they somehow captured me, she waited to say it because it was pretty hard for her to imagine what would happen to her. But then Naruto tightened the hug on her which made her feel better and she decided to continue. They would make me stay in a cell and I know from battle experience that Danzo would make the root Anbu rape me until I gave them powerful children and the Hokage will pretend like nothing was happening, Orochimaru was trying not to cry. But it was pretty hard because she knew that's what would happen if she got captured. But what really surprised her was Naruto growled and she looked down only to see his eyes went from ocean blue to demonic red with black slits, I won't let anyone hurt my Orochi-chan. Orochimaru raised her eyebrow and asked Naruto, so when did I become yours, Naruto-kun? Naruto blushed and stuttered incoherently and Orochimaru couldn't help but giggle at him, it felt nice and it felt right to be with him so she asked Naruto one more question, do you want to come with me? Naruto didn't even hesitate to answer her and she smiled at him. They were both walking for some time and finally Orochimaru found her hidden hideout where she used to do experiments when she was a part of the village, Orochimaru turned around and asked Naruto to wait outside so she could collect some things and Naruto nodded not wanting to make her mad by asking if he can go in as well. Orochimaru saw him pout and she bent down and kissed him on the cheek which in turn caused his face to turn red with steam coming out and Orochimaru couldn't help but giggle and said, you're just so fun to tease Naruto-kun. Naruto waited outside for Orochimaru to come out and after a few minutes she finally came out saying, are you ready to go Naruto-kun? Naruto nodded happily and they both disappeared after that. Two years later. The Leaf Village Hokage was sitting in his desk waiting for any report showing any hint where Naruto could be. Not a lot of people missed Naruto and some most actually threw parties that the demon was gone which were stopped by the Hokage, but they kept on partying even after the Hokage reprimanded them. Most of the kids Naruto knew when he was in the academy didn't care that he was gone the only ones that really noticed were Hinata, Shikamaru, Lee, and Choji and the only teacher was Aruka. Of course they weren't the only ones that missed the blonde ball of energy, Ikarakus missed its favorite customer and the Hokage missed him as well. Hidden Sound Village Naruto was walking down the streets looking for something to eat until he heard a girl scream and right away went to save whoever it was. Naruto arrived at a site that disgusted him to no end. Three guys were trying to rape a young girl about his age and Naruto would have none of that. He appeared near the first guy and shoved his hand through the guy's heart which got a surprised gasp from the other two guys because they were sweating bullets being near the demon of the sound. Naruto looked down at the young girl and saw her flinch which in turn caused him to look away because he knew Kayubi's eyes were scaring her so he turned back to the two guys that were trying to run away, but didn't get the chance because Naruto charged them saying, fire style flaming bomb jutsu, and both the guys got caught in the blast causing them both to die together with screams of agony and pain occupying them. After Naruto finished them off he went to check if the girl was okay and to his relief she only had some cuts and a couple of bruises. 
Kin looked at the boy who saved her from a fate worse than death and said thank you to him which he turned around to and smiled at her. Kin looked at his smile and it just melted her and made her feel safe like nobody can hurt her then she looked up and saw his eyes, but this time she wasn't scared of them and could only say one thing when she saw them, beautiful. Naruto was surprised that she said that and couldn't help remember that he said the same thing to the Kayubi when he first met her. One year ago Hidden Sound Village. Orochi-chan, why do you want me to meet the Kayubi? Orochimaru smiled at him and said, Naruto, you're a kind and sweet boy and I think only you could melt the hatred inside the Kayubi's heart like you did with mine. Naruto nodded and asked how was he supposed to contact the Kayubi and Orochimaru answered that with a hard punch to the stomach and a perverted grin saying, Oh, and you better hurry up or I might do something to your body that in my opinion you would love, as he was slipping into unconsciousness he saw her give him a wink. Naruto woke up in a sewer and the first thing he thought about was how much of a dump this place was, but all his complaining was ended with a growl that echoed through the halls and to any sane person they would have run away but not Naruto he was memorized by that growl and wanted to know more about the creature that the growl came from. Naruto kept on walking on what looked like an endless hallway and was about to quit until he went through an entrance and ended up in front of a large cell with two huge red eyes with black slits. The Kayubi saw Naruto enter and wanted to scare him by glaring at him but to his surprise Naruto just kept on smiling so the Kayubi decided on a different approach, well what is by Jailer doing here? Quote dot. Naruto looked up and kept on smiling at the nine-tailed fox and then did the one thing not even a crazy person would do, he went inside the prison bars and stood right in front of the nine tails like it was nothing. Kayubi looked down at the human in surprise and remembered in all its time being trapped inside its hosts not one of them were brave enough or crazy enough to go inside the bars. Naruto stood in front of the fox waiting for it to do something and to his relief the fox just smiled and said, well you sure are one interesting human to come in here and not be scared for his life, Naruto smiled and yelled, I really like your fur. Quote dot. Kayubi was beyond surprised now and smirked at Naruto. Why aren't you just a little charmer? Naruto laughed and walked around the cage while the Nine Tails was sizing him up and if you looked closely enough you could see a tiny blush on the Nine Tails' cheeks, for a human he is quite handsome, the Nine Tails thought. After Naruto was done looking around he then asked the Nine Tails if he could change his mindscape and to his surprise the Nine Tails licked Naruto which in his case he considered gross because its tongue got all of him so now his cloths were slobbery. But then he heard the nine tails saying, thank you, thank you Naruto, I was getting sick of being in this sewer. Naruto then concentrated on changing the mindscape into a lush green open field with lots of foxes and animals as well as a house for the nine tails to sleep in, but he had other things on his mind, why did the Kayubi's voice sound feminine when it thanked me? Kayubi couldn't help but to look around in awe because it was so beautiful. Then she turned around and saw a smiling Naruto and decided to give him a reward. Naruto stared at a shrinking Kayubi and then felt something tackling him, when he looked up he saw a girl with red hair and a red and black kimono but what really got him were the fluffy and cute red fox ears and red fox tails with black tips. When she opened her eyes and looked at him she thought he would reject her but instead she heard him say, your eyes are beautiful, she felt so happy that she didn't think about what she was doing and just kissed Naruto on the lips which he moaned to because of how soft her luscious lips were. They kept on making out for about a good minute until he felt his lower half hardening and he was afraid that she might think that he is a pervert, but instead she smiled and leaned in and whispered, are you getting excited by little old me? Naruto laughed at that and retorted with, haha, old you, yay right. You're too beautiful and fun and cute and, he didn't get to finish because she glomped him again and captured his lips. This time she moaned because she felt his tongue around her lips and opened her mouth to allow him entrance and to her it felt amazing. Naruto finally pushed her away before he would do something that he wouldn't regret. Uh, Kayubi it's nice and all to kiss you but I want to talk about something with you. Kayubi looked down and knew that he was probably going to ask her about his parents or why she attacked the village but to her surprise he instead asked, how do you feel about being free? She couldn't hold it in anymore and just attacked her blonde-headed hero. Naruto wasn't surprised by her action and just hugged her back, then he told her, you just have to wait a year, deal. She nodded and he left his mindscape.
Naruto before we get to my hideout I need you to promise me something, Naruto looked at her and asked, is it about you being female? She giggled at how perceptive he was and said, yes Naruto, you can't tell anyone. Right now you're the only person in the world that knows this secret and I trust you with it, please don't make me regret it, Naruto smiled and responded, I would never do something to hurt you Orochi-chan, I'll always be by your side my snake Haim. Flashback end. Orochimaru was just reminiscing when all of a sudden Kabuto walked in asking Orochimaru, what's wrong, and Orochimaru answered with, nothing. Orochimaru decided to check up on her favorite student since she was done playing around with her poisons. Naruto arrived at the hideout and went inside only to meet Kabuto, oh, Naruto it's just you, I thought you were an intruder, Naruto looked at him and said, nope just me. Kabuto can you help me out with kin here she is kind of injured. Kabuto took note of the girl in his arms and couldn't help but laugh, haha, Naruto you just can't help bringing home strays, you're too good hearted to be with Orochimaru, Naruto's smirk vanished and then came an unexpected amount of bloodlust that rivals Orochimaru. Kabuto's eyes widen and he has a hard time breathing in Naruto's presence while kin felt fine, what was that Kabuto? I couldn't hear you, Kabuto realized he just said something that could get him killed and decided to take back his statement seeing how powerful the blonde is. Kayubi felt the spike in bloodlust and concluded that it must have been Naruto getting pissed off so she transformed into her fox spirit form and leapt off his bed and ran to her lover. On the way she found Orochimaru with a smile on her face and decided to join her. So she leapt onto Orochimaru's right shoulder and dug her tiny claws into Orochimaru's clothing so she wouldn't fall off. Orochimaru noticed a tiny fox on her shoulder, still in a male body henge, and smiled at it as they both went on there to meet up with Naruto. Both Orochimaru and Kayubi at first didn't like each other but after a while they both found a lot of things they like about Naruto and how they both hated the hidden leaf village on how they treated their Naruto-kun, so they became friends pretty quickly which Naruto was happy about because his two favorite girls could be the best of friends and watch each other's backs. Orochimaru decided to ask Q-chan how the seal between them is doing and her response was. Oh the seal is amazing, I still don't believe you and Naruto came up with the idea of body link seal where both of us can use nine tails of power like we were two separate entities, Orochimaru gave her a smile and said. I'm glad you like it. Naruto worked especially hard since he didn't want you to lose all the power you have obtained and I thought that was very sweet of him, Kayubi blushed and was glad that her fur was hiding it because she too was happy when Naruto said that she would still retain all her power just it would be like there are two nine-tailed foxes instead of one. Both Orochimaru and Kayubi arrived at a scene that had them laughing because Kabuto being lectured by Naruto. Naruto noticed Orochimaru and Kayubi and decided to stop lecturing Kabuto and ask Orochimaru to help Kin, Orochimaru saw Naruto walk up to her with a girl in his arms and right away thought, darn it Naruto why do you have to be such a nice guy, I don't like to share, Naruto looked at Orochimaru and asked, sensei, can you look at Kin for me, Orochimaru smiled and told Naruto to follow her and Naruto did that, Kabuto got up and followed them since at the moment he had nothing better to do. Kayubi decided at that moment to jump on top of Naruto's head and lay down, Naruto lifted his hand up and petted Q-chan gently to show her that he loves her. They all arrived at a little nurse's office where Orochimaru had Kin lay down on the bed and when Orochimaru was about to check her injuries until a foul-mouthed girl walked in carrying a big guy. Hey Snake Tem, I need you to fix this guy because I think I broke him. Naruto got a tick mark on his head because of how she was treating his snake Haim with such disrespect, Orochimaru noticed this and was going to save the girl from Naruto's wrath, but decided against it because that girl needs to learn some respect for her betters and also Orochimaru loved how Naruto treated her like a princess. Naruto walked up to the disrespectful girl and grabbed her by the collar growling out. How dare you treat Orochimaru with such disrespect, Tuyuya scoffed at this and retorted. What are you gay or something for this little boy fucker huh, shithead, Naruto got another tick mark because he didn't care how she called him names and treated him like trash, but when you treat one of his himes with such disrespect he will make that person pay, say that again bitch, 
I dare you, Tuyuya smirked and was about to say it again until Naruto hit her with a full blast of bloodlust and killer intent to make even Orochimaru sweat drop. Naruto just stared at her with his red chakra radiating bloodlust and his red eyes with black slits showing that he wasn't playing around, Tuyuya was about to say something until Kin opened her eyes on the bed and saw Tuyuya being held up by Naruto. Kin was worried because Tuyuya was being held up and Kin could tell that Tuyuya was very scared of the person that was holding her up but was trying to keep her tough girl act on. Kin decided to break the tension by saying, Tuyuya is that you? Tuyuya looked over Naruto to find Kin on a bed and right away got out of Naruto's grasp somehow and ran to Kin, Kin-chan are you okay? Nothing happened to you right? Kin can only smiled on how her best friend acted and said, no everything is fine, Naruto-kun saved me from some gross men who were going to do things to me. Tuyuya was happy to hear that Naruto saved her best friend from some sound ninja and responded by tackling Naruto and giving him a bone-crushing hug. Thank you Naruto, thank you, Naruto sighed and rubbed her head, he couldn't stay mad at her when she is this happy but thought of a way to get her to treat Orochimaru with more respect, to Yuya, how about if I can get Orochimaru to let Kin stay with you and ask him to train her as well, then will you treat him with more respect? To Yuya looked at Naruto and decided to take the deal since it was a bit far-fetched, there's no way Orochimaru would agree to that, she thought. Naruto nodded and went up to Orochimaru and asked, Orochimaru can Kin stay with Tuyuya and can you train her as well? Orochimaru thought about it and then said, fine, only if I can test out some of my poisons on you and, she whispered this the next part, you spend some time with me, but with Naruto's enhanced hearing he walked up to her ear and whispered, I would love to spend time with my snake Haim. Orochimaru tried not to blush because that would give them the wrong impression so she went up to Kin and asked her if she would like to be a ninja and stay with Tuyuya, Kin replied right away by hugging Orochimaru which got a mouth hanging to Yuya because she didn't believe Shithead would be able to convince Orochimaru to let Kin stay and train. Orochimaru accepted the hug and then told Kin to rest up and then went up to Tuyuya and told her to keep an eye on her which Tuyuya agreed to right away. Naruto was happy to see those two talking and laughing with each other and then he saw Kabuto smirking and decided to ask him, Yo Kabuto, what's so funny? Kabuto then noticed Naruto right next to him and answered, Orochimaru never acted this kind when you were not around, it just makes me wonder what you did to make him act the way he does now. Naruto smirked and in his mind thought of a reason, could be because she finally found someone to trust with her secret or maybe because she finally found someone that loves her with all his heart. Orochimaru then decided to leave the two girls alone and walked outside the room door which Naruto noticed and followed behind her with Kayubi on his head and Kabuto right behind him. Orochimaru walked in the middle while Kabuto walked on her left and Naruto walked on her left while all three of them talked about different kinds of experiments which mostly consisted of poisons and ways to strengthen the body. When all three of them arrived at Orochimaru's lab, Naruto right away regretted the deal because he saw the sinister smile on her face telling him that she was going to enjoy this. Kabuto was wondering about something and decided to make his ask about his thoughts, Orochimaru-sama, wouldn't Naruto die if you subjugated him with your poisons? Orochimaru turned around and answered Kabuto while telling Naruto to take off his shirt, well Kabuto, since Naruto is a Jinchiraki his body can take a lot of different kinds of injuries and heal without a problem and one of those things would be poison which I make Naruto here get injected with because if the poison can affect a Jinchiraki then the poison is strong enough to affect anyone. Don't you agree Naruto? Naruto shivered when Orochimaru put her smooth hand on his arm and then she got out a needle containing some purple liquid, are you ready, Naruto? Naruto looked her in the eyes and smiled while nodding and after she saw Naruto nod she injected the liquid into his arm and watched the effects it had on him. At first nothing was happening but after a couple of minutes Naruto noticed his veins becoming purple and his body started to shut down as if he was already dead. Orochimaru watched in fascination on how his veins turned purple and his body went limp all of a sudden while she was looking at him, she couldn't help but lick her lips which didn't get unnoticed by Kabuto because he was shivering when he saw Orochimaru lick his lips. Orochimaru decided that she got enough data and told Naruto to get up which Kabuto had to retort with, Orochimaru-sama, how do you expect him to ge? 
Kabuto didn't get to finish because he was too shocked seeing Naruto get up like it was nothing. Naruto looked at Kabuto and laughed at seeing his surprised face and when he saw Orochimaru leave he decided to follow her leaving Kabuto all alone thinking about what he just saw. Orochimaru saw Naruto behind her and then noticed the little nine-tailed fox sleeping on top of his head, Naruto do you think I should become Otokage of the Hidden Sound Village? Naruto stopped when she said that and gave her a big smile, yes I do, you're really strong and I wish you could show your true self but I love you either way. I want to become one of your Anbu and only yours, Orochimaru couldn't help but have a little pink show on her cheeks after he said that to her. They both after that kept on walking to the Otokage Tower, but were stopped by some of the Hidden Sound Village's ninja, hey where do you think you're going, Orochimaru? Both Naruto and Orochimaru could hear the disgust in his voice after saying her name. Orochimaru didn't really care how they used her name but she looked to her right and saw Naruto trying to restrain himself from slaughtering these fools and she could tell the Kayubi is trying to do the same. Orochimaru couldn't help and be happy because of how much both Kayubi and Naruto cared for her since no one has really cared about her in her life. Naruto was gripping his own hand to restrain himself from killing these idiots for disrespecting his snake Haim and he could tell from the low growls on top of his head that Kayubi wasn't faring any better. Orochimaru sighed and then said, I'm here to become Otokage of the Hidden Sound Village, the three guys looked at one another laughing in the process, haha you want to become Otokage. That's funny. We don't trash running our village, Naruto knew that was his last straw so he moved so fast it would make the yellow flash green with envy and appeared in front of the middle guy. Naruto glared at the guy with his fox eyes and lifted him up by the collar of his jacket, don't you dare call Orochimaru trash. The only trash here is you and you should feel honored that Orochimaru wants to be Otokage of this pathetic village, the other two were about to attack Naruto until one of them fell on the floor foaming out his mouth thanks to Orochimaru and the other got sent flying into a tree thanks to a humanized Kayubi. Naruto then let the trash down and growled, you will take us to the Otokage's tower if you want to live, the guy nodded like crazy and started walking while thinking what he got himself into. Orochimaru Naruto and Kayubi kept walking with the sound ninja in front of them until they reached the tower which the ninja took as a sign that he could go and ran away as fast as he could to get away from these monsters. All three of them went inside the tower and came across the Otokage's room, Orochimaru looked at Naruto and he smiled motioning her to go in while the person on the other side heard the door opening and saw a boy, a man, and a woman. Orochimaru noticed a man at the desk and could right away tell that this man was not a ninja considering he doesn't have any guards and couldn't sense them outside the door. The man saw the girl and right away said, wow, that is a hot looking slut you got me, that statement didn't go so well with Naruto because the next thing the guy knew he was bleeding out his throat with a kid right next to him holding a bloody kanai. Naruto had a sinister smile on his face which made Orochimaru and Kayubi feel hot all over but Orochimaru decided she had a bigger job to do since now the temporary head of the hidden sound village was dead, Naruto it's sweet that you care about me and Q-chan so much but you can't go killing everybody that makes you upset especially when I don't get to torture them first, she then gave Naruto a wicked grin which warmed Naruto's heart. While that was happening back in the Hidden Leaf Village the Hokage was very sad because he kept blaming himself for the reason that Naruto left and he was also sad that some people didn't even notice he was gone and the ones that actually did were few in numbers since they only amount to a hand worth of people. The Hokage was thinking about appointing a successor to the village but decided against it since they might harbor very strong feelings of hate towards Naruto and if they find him he doesn't want Naruto to suffer again. Saratobi was about to just put his head down on his desk until Jiraiya hopped in through the window with urgent news. The Hokage was shocked to hear this, are you sure that this is real? Jiraiya nodded and said, yes I got reports telling me Naruto is going to be participating in the Janan exams in our village and he's coming with the Otokage and his partner. Saratobi nodded to this and was happy to hear that Naruto was safe but was suspicious of why he was in the Hidden Sound Village because that's where Orochimaru is located, Jiraiya are you sure that it's Naruto and not someone hanged like him? Jiraiya answered with a nod and the Hokage sighed, can you tell me how you met him? Jiraiya nodded again said, well, 
I thank you for putting up with my and my computer's problems and I also thank you for your support and faves. I will make sure to update as much as possible since you all are being very kind to me. Naruto was walking on a mission with Kayubi in her fox form on his head and Orochimaru by his side because she left Kabuto to do the paperwork. When they got far enough from the village, Naruto turned around and asked Orochimaru to transform back into her female form and Orochimaru couldn't help but comply because of how cute Naruto looked with those puppy dog eyes. They have been walking for a while and Orochimaru couldn't help but look at Naruto's hand because she wanted to hold it and she wasn't known to be a shy and scared type of person, but she didn't want Naruto to hate her. Naruto looked at Orochimaru and saw her conflicting emotions on her face so he just grabbed her hand and held on to it tight but not enough to hurt her but enough to show her that he cares for her. Orochimaru noticed Naruto's hand holding hers and couldn't help but blush from the contact until they both heard a sound in the trees. Naruto threw a kunai in that direction and heard a thump, Orochimaru saw who was on the ground and right away disappeared and reappeared right behind him with a kunai to his throat. Jiraiya watched as the kunai was thrown his way and dodged it but had the unlucky break of having a faulty tree branch and fell on his butt in the process, next thing he knew he had an angry Orochimaru behind him with a kunai pointed at his throat. Naruto narrowed his eyes at this man because he hasn't seen his snake Heim being that mad in a while and Kayubi couldn't help but giggle at seeing the guy's shocked face when he saw a female version of Orochimaru. Jiraiya was too busy looking at a miniature version of the fourth Hokage to notice a kunai at his throat but before he could call out the fourth's name, Orochimaru spoke, Jiraiya what are you doing here? Did the village send you to take back Naruto? Speak or die. Jiraiya noticed the look Orochimaru was giving him so he had to choose his words carefully or he would end up dead. Jiraiya knew in this kind of situation he could not escape without a heavy injury so he decided it would be best to surrender before it got ugly, okay, okay, I surrender, Jiraiya hesitated saying the next part and that didn't go unnoticed by Naruto and the others. Naruto then went up the Jiraiya and asked him why he was watching them and his response was, the third told me to find you and take you back to your home. Naruto started to become angry and his eyes turned red with black slits in the process which Kayubi noticed and went to comfort Naruto before he did something that he might regret. Naruto noticed Kayubi's slender arms wrap around his muscled frame and just let the rage that he was feeling disappear, Jiraiya noticed the woman that was hugging him and the part that scared him after that were the nine orange tails with red tips waving around her and wrapping around Naruto embracing him in a nice hug. Jiraiya all of a sudden yelled at Naruto, Naruto how could you let that monster escape its prison, it destroyed your hoe, before Jiraiya was finished he got punched by an enraged Naruto covered in his first tail form. Jiraiya looked up from the area he ended up in after Naruto punched him and noticed the destruction just one punch caused, ah, uh, I feel like I got hit by one of Tsunade's punches, Jiraiya thought. Naruto walked up to Jiraiya and grabbed him by the collar while growling out, don't ever call my fox I'm a monster or you'll regret it, then Naruto dropped Jiraiya on the ground like a sack of potatoes and went back to comfort his love because she felt bad since she was the reason Naruto's life was horrible. Jiraiya saw Naruto hugging the nine-tailed fox and decided to leave it at that since she doesn't seem that dangerous at the moment, Jiraiya then got up and went near them to ask Naruto a question but before he could get even five feet Orochimaru pulled out the kusanagi from her mouth and pointed it at Jiraiya since she deemed him a danger to Naruto and a bully to poor Kayubi. Jiraiya stared at the blade in front of him and was about to make a Rasengan to get rid of Orochimaru but the glare he got from Naruto when he saw the sudden aggression coming from him got Jiraiya to think twice about what he was about to do. Jiraiya decided to ask Naruto what he was going to do and Naruto answered, I am going to participate in the Jonin exams and make my snake Heim proud, Jiraiya couldn't help but be proud that his student's son was already a Chunin and going to become a Jonin. Jiraiya wanted to ask him if he could train him but with Orochimaru here he knew she might not let him go near Naruto since he was as part of the leaf village. Naruto saw Orochimaru still have her sword pointed at Jiraiya and told her that she could put it away since Jiraiya didn't seem like he wanted to harm any of them, yet. Jiraiya decided to take a chance and ask Naruto if he wanted to be trained by him but to his surprise Naruto said, No, I already have the best teachers I could ask for. They are both beautiful, strong, 
and caring, Jiraiya widened his eyes before he formed a smile and asked Naruto in a whisper-like tone, So, have you slept with them yet? Naruto was surprised by the boldness of his question and blushed because of the thoughts he was having about his two lovely ladies. Flashback interrupted, Saratobi widened his eyes and yelled, Wait, wait, Orochimaru and the Kayubi are female and they both love Naruto. Jiraiya got a tick mark on his head because he got interrupted but grew a smile on his face when Saratobi asked him that question, Oh yes, they are both in love with him and if I do say so myself they are both drop dead sexy. Saratobi started getting a nosebleed and in his head were thoughts like, You lucky bastard, Naruto, and, if only I was younger, Jiraiya saw the nosebleed and smiled because he had the same reaction when Orochimaru told him what she would do to Naruto if he was alone with her. Saratobi decided to tell Jiraiya to continue his report, if that's what you would call that wink wink, and Jiraiya went back to telling him what happened to Naruto. Flashback continue. Orochimaru saw Naruto's blushing face and smirked while walking over to the two whispering males. Kayubi saw Orochimaru going near Naruto and Jiraiya so she decided to go see what they are whispering about. Naruto didn't notice Orochimaru until she was whispering, what are you blushing about? In his ear, Jiraiya couldn't help but stare at Orochimaru bending down because it showed a good amount of her cleavage to Jiraiya this action though didn't get unnoticed by Naruto and Jiraiya knew he heard Naruto growl out, mine. Naruto noticed Kayubi looking lonely so he asked Orochi-chan if he could go play with Kayubi and Orochimaru's response was just a smile which to Naruto meant, yes. While Naruto was running around with Kayubi which Orochimaru found cute because Kayubi still loved to play around. Jiraiya noticed the happy look that Orochimaru was giving both the Nine Tails and Naruto which caused him to smile because he never knew the real Orochimaru. Orochimaru finally stopped watching them and decided to turn around even if she really didn't want to, okay Jiraiya, why are you here? Jiraiya was about to say the same thing he told Naruto until he was cut off by Orochimaru, don't give me that crap about the third, Jiraiya sighed at Orochimaru's very perceptive side and answered her truthfully, I heard about Naruto being kidnapped by you and how Danzo is going to send some of his root to bring back his, weapon. Orochimaru started to grit her teeth because of the idea of that disgusting man taking away her happiness, I won't let Danzo take away my love, she thought. Orochimaru then said, I didn't kidnap Naruto. He went with me on his own accord. Jiraiya smiled and nodded because of how happy Naruto looks being with them, so Orochimaru, are you going to do anything fun to Naruto? She smiled at his question and whispered something into his ear which sent him flying with a bloody nose and that action caused a giggling Kayubi since she used her chakra to enhance her fox ears even more to hear what Orochimaru whispered to the old pervert. Later Jiraiya decided it was time for him to leave but he was a bit disappointed that Naruto didn't want to learn the Rasengan, Naruto saw Jiraiya's sad expression and told him that he already knew the Rasengan since Orochi-chan taught him the steps and he completed it which surprised Jiraiya. As Jiraiya was leaving he couldn't be more proud of his sensei's son and couldn't be more happy that Naruto is happy with the life that he is living now but in the back of his mind Jiraiya was cursing him for being such a lucky guy for scoring not just one but two hot ladies. Flashback end. Saratobi was happy because he knew that Naruto is happy and doing good, Jiraiya saw Saratobi smile and knew that he wasn't going to force Naruto to come back. Saratobi then asked a serious question. Is Orochimaru by any chance the Otogakur of the hidden sound? Jiraiya nodded and Saratobi sighed and then asked Jiraiya to do something for him. Can you send this letter to her? Jiraiya was nodded again and was happy to go because he gets to see his godson again. Hidden Sound Village. Orochimaru was in the Otokage's office doing paperwork, which is the dread of all the cages out there when all of a sudden she heard a knock on the door. Enter, said Orochimaru. Adol one of the people that actually supported Orochimaru taking office came in through the cage's door. Orochimaru looked at Adol and told him to sit down which he happily did, now what can I do for you? Adol was actually surprised by the kindness of Orochimaru because even though he supported him, remember Orochimaru still has to hide her true gender, he thought that an S-class criminal in the bingo book would be more terrifying. Adol decided to speak to Orochimaru about the Jonin exams, Otokage-sama, 
the Hokage of the Hidden Leaf accepted your proposal of allowing entry into the exams but only on one condition, Orochimaru sighed and asked, what condition? Then she gestured for the Janin to continue which he happily did, well he said, only if he can meet both you and Naruto. Orochimaru nodded and let the Janin go do whatever that he was doing while thinking she went back to doing the nightmarish paperwork and daydreaming about Naruto, I wonder what he is doing right now. She thought. Orochimaru's hideout, Kayubi saw Naruto practicing some of her fox techniques like fire style, flaming fox bomb, and fire style, fox fire devastation. She decided it was time to talk to him about being her mate because she didn't want to be alone anymore. Naruto saw Kayubi walk up to him gesturing him to sit down which he did so he could listen to what she wanted to say. Naruto, you love me right, Kayubi said which got a confused look from Naruto since he never thought that she would ask that question since he always told her that he really cared for her, yes of course Q-chan why wouldn't I? I love both you and Maru-chan with everything I got. That got her to brighten up and then she went to ask him the next question, how do you feel about becoming my mate? Naruto smiled and answered, I would love to become your mite, my fox Haim, Kayubi smiled and then told him the steps they had to do which Naruto listened and nodded to the whole time, so I have to bite your neck at the same time you bite mine and by doing that our chakras can combine. Kayubi then added another thing that he needed to know, oh I almost forgot, you will become a Hanyo which will allow you to have half demon and half human blood in you, even though she told him that, she was scared that he might reject the idea of becoming her mate after hearing all that. But all her worries were gone when he said, I'm ready anytime you are, my dear, she was so happy that she right away brought him into a hug which Naruto accepted full force and then they proceeded to do the mating ritual. Naruto bit down on her neck while she bit down on his and they both put their chakra in each other's systems. After they were done, a seal appeared on Naruto's shoulder showing a reddish nine-tailed fox and the same happened to the Kayubi. She was about to stand back up until Naruto grabbed her hand and pulled her into his lap which she snuggled into his strong warm chest. Kayubi was enjoying the feeling of being with her mate but she needed to tell him the other prospects about the seal. Oh Naruto, you should know that if you wanted to make Orochimaru your mate all you need to do is bite down on her neck and the seal will appear on her as well. Naruto nodded and then decided to ask her about her name, Kayubi, I was wondering what your real name is since I know Kayubi isn't really a name but mostly just a title. Kayubi smiled and answered, well before I didn't really give you my name because I didn't really know if I could trust you yet, this caused Naruto look a bit sad which she noticed and decided to continue before he got too depressed. But, after all those times of caring for me and loving me, I started to believe I could trust you and since now that we are mated, I can trust my husband with my name, there was a pause and Naruto was dying from anticipation and then Kayubi was delighted to finally tell him, my name is Natsuki. Naruto smiled and told her that her beautiful name matches her perfect beauty which got her to blush and call Naruto a charmer. Orochimaru arrived at the hideout only to see Naruto and Kayubi making out on a couch. Orochimaru started to get jealous because while she was doing the crappy paperwork, Kayubi got to stay here with Naruto and kiss him. Naruto sensed someone nearby and stopped making out with Natsuki momentarily to find Orochimaru staring at them with a blush on her face. Naruto got up and walked up to Orochimaru remembering Natsuki's words about being okay with him marking Maru-chan. Orochimaru saw Naruto look at her with a look of wanting and she decided to comply by dispelling her transformation jutsu, still as beautiful as ever, my snake Haim, said Naruto. She smiled at the compliment that he gave her and before she said something, Naruto smashed his lips with hers causing her to moan a little because of the love and passion he put into it. After he parted his lips from hers, he started to kiss her neck and then all of a sudden he bit her neck causing Orochimaru to wince a bit from the pain but instead of pushing him away she just hugged his head telling him that she was okay with whatever he was doing. Naruto finally stopped biting her and put his head up to look her in the eyes, now you're mine Maru-chan, said Naruto which got a confused look from Orochimaru. She then looked at her neck because of the burning sensation coming from it and right away noticed a reddish fox with nine tails on her neck. She was going to ask about it but Naruto beat her to it, 
it's a mating mark just like the one Natsuki has on her neck and the one I have on mine. Orochimaru was so happy to hear that because the next thing she did surprised Naruto, she grabbed him and put him into a deep and passionate lip lock causing Naruto to blush up a storm since she decided to pretty much, rape, his mouth with her tongue. Orochimaru then told him that she is going to be training him for the next month until the Janan exams start and Naruto was happy to hear that since being trained by an S-class ninja will guarantee his chances of becoming Janan. So for the next month all his time went to being trained by Orochimaru and when she didn't have the time because of her cage duties, Natsuki trained him instead.